I want to give my feedback on this this game. Do I like it better than Undertale? I have to say no. I still enjoy Undertale a lot more. So Undertale came come first, you know, you kind of like what you see first, right? So for this one, though, I'm not sure what the story is going to be since if I was going to this game blind and not know anything about Undertale, this is kind of a counterintuitive thing because this game technically plot-wise uh, comes before Undertale, right? So if I go into this game blind without playing the original Undertale, I wouldn't really understand much. Yeah, the same plot, human trying to leave the underworld. No, I got that. But this one, it kind of says you have kind of have to play the original one before going to this one. That's all I'm saying. The other thing is that Undertale 1, you said, you guys know this, right? It's much shorter and the characters are a little bit more, I want to say a little bit more focused. This one, we just literally met five guys. And then the other two bosses, which I don't really, really even remember the name of, except, you know, Dancing Dancing uh, uh, Mask Guy, and the one that that I killed, the Vampire Guy. In other words, I like games that are a little bit more condensed, is what I'm trying to say. And the character is a little bit more focused. Because I was like, okay, Toriel, I got the name. I got Sans is the name, Papyrus is the name, Alfie, got it. And then Undy, and of course, Asgore, blah, 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 and all that stuff. There's just these names. And there's that yellow kid and the spider lady and a few others sprinkled here and there that is not too re prevalent to the um, plot. This one, though, Flowey, important because, well, Flowey's important. And then um, I, wanna, I almost said Birdly. <laughs> I almost said Birdly. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, female Papyrus, right? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I still have a hard time remembering her name. And then all of a sudden, all these guys dumped in here with their names. Edward, whatever. And then there's also Mo, which I remember that name because he was actually, I was like, oh man, sounds like a cool character. Kind of like a Sans character. But he never kind of shows up again. He was just a merchant, sells me a couple of stuff. And that was it. Didn't really hear much. Maybe he comes back later. And then there's... Because Sans shows up here and there. And he... And then the last thing I want to say is that the lines. There's a lot of dialogue in this game. But obviously it's not written by Toby Fox. Because Toby Fox, whether it's in Undertale or Delta Room, you kind of got that snappy, quirky, smart-ass humor. You know what I mean? This one, unfortunately, it's kind of lacking. Not saying that the game is bad. Music is great. I still really enjoy the music. So this is my opinion of the game so far. Um, I haven't officially developed any sort of emotional attachment to any of these characters. x on the main character, Clover. Same thing with, not Chris, uh, Frisk, whatever. So right now, like, who am I supposed to get attached to? You are the main character who's trying to go home. But then again, you have to kind of understand this world. I understand the world of Undertale when I first played it immediately. It's like, okay, I trapped in, I'm trapped in here. I'm trying to go home. Then you see like the world of Undertale. You slowly realize it. Oh man, these guys are actually really, really nice. They're trapped in here for a reason. They look to Undy and they look for Asgore for hope. Here though, they're not mentioned as much. Some of these guys even says like, I can, I am content to be living here for a while. And these, these guys right here, they, uh, with, even though we just met, I don't really understand like the purpose of these guys. It's just too much, in my opinion. Both uh, both Frisk and Clover is just trying to go home. But I was curious on how, okay, you both have the same mission, but one I know Clover is going to fail because Asgore does take the yellow soul eventually, right? Where is this game going? It's taking a little bit because we're still technically not halfway there, but I'm having troubles like understand where are we going with this route right now. As you go through under, under uh, Undertale, Sans is basically kind of judging you from the outright because he told you, he's like, I could have killed you when we first met. I could have killed you, but I just want to see how you do and everything. And Papyrus was giving you chances. The yellow kid was giving you like the benefit of the doubts, everything depending on what you do. So here, there really isn't anyone judging you, except for Flowey, but we know Flowey's, you know, not exactly the best person. I gave uh, Undertale like a 9, 9.5, very, very high score. I usually give games like around 7, 7.5. It's also like a very good game. That's also a very good game already. Most games I rate as average is like a 5. 5 out of 10. It's average, isn't it? So I don't just, some people say, well, 5 is too low. No, low is to like, to me, is like 2 or 3. 
and I easily give a lot of games nowadays like two or three fours whatever for me if I score a game like six or seven it's actually quite high for this game though uh, compare if I have to compare another one maybe Delta room maybe also not a fair comparison because I like the writing in Delta room a little bit better because uh you got Susie you got Rousey uh, with that snappy Toby Fox writing so this one though um, it's made by a fan I'm not sure how many fans did it and because all of you guys no fault to your own you guys hyped the hell out of this game for me so far the music has lived up to it for the combat it's actually a little bit more interesting the original Undertale is actually quite good uh, that was the one thing I found a little bit more challenging which is great I like challenge from this kind of game these little you know dodge the attack whatever here and there it's really good I'm sure most of you agree is like why if so if you're gonna really recommend Undertale to someone if they ask you why what do you why do you like Undertale are you gonna say the combat is awesome the gameplay is like top tier like well no I'm not saying Undertale is a has bad gameplay it's just it's very simple I can't speak for everyone but most people would say Undertale is like if they recommend it to someone who doesn't know it, it'd be like the character is gonna you're gonna get attached to the character. It's snappy, good writing, good humor, songs, the memes and music and everything. So with this one though, again, those things are a little bit on the subjective side. It took me a little bit longer to get attached to Susie and Rousey, just a little bit. But it's taking a lot, but it's a lot faster than the characters here. So yeah, that that's my uh, interpretation of this game right now. As you're trying to escape the underground level, right? In Undertale, it shows you the world of, of some of the suffering that these monsters are going through. Here, though, they're not suffering as much. Because they're just working in mines, they're just being lazy, they're being goofy, they have a hot spring, and they have jobs. Not as bad as I really think, you know? But since Shuyan and everyone else kept telling me that, hey, give it a time, and the true pacifist or the ending of this game will really you know, make you feel something. I believe it. I'm hoping that it does. I'm ho really hoping that it does. All I'm saying the flaws in this game is that uh, the writing is not as snappy and a little bit too many characters and a little bit too much. That's all.